My name is Margaret McMillan, and I was an undergraduate at the University of Toronto in what used to be called Honours History, graduating in 1966. I came to the University of Toronto partly um, because my father insisted. I had gone to high school in Toronto and, and for various reasons um, hadn't liked it very much and I went off to a boarding school in England for two years, which I loved, and the school wanted me to try for Oxford or Cambridge. And my father said, you're Canadian. He said, if you want to do graduate work in Oxford or Cambridge, fine. But he said, as a Canadian, you should be educated at a Canadian university, which I thought was a very unreasonable perspective. And of course, he was absolutely right. And I came back, and, and you know, I never regretted coming back at all, even from the first day I came here. I mean, I enjoyed Trinity very much. I had a great year in history. I had a wonderful four years. And I'm very glad I didn't go and study somewhere else, because I think I got a much better sense of Canada. I have, you know, feel much more rooted in this country. <laughs> well, you know, I think we all have memories of our undergraduate years. I remember getting involved in the Trinity Dramatic Society. Mm -hmm. And much to everyone's amusement, I, I was in charge of costumes for a play, and I had never been able to sew in my life, but I somehow managed to make costumes for this play, which I enjoyed enormously. I got involved in sports, I got involved in debating, I played hockey for the UT women's hockey team, which I really enjoyed. I mean, I just remember, I mean, I remember enjoying the academic work. I think my first year I wasn't really serious about it, and then I realized that, in fact, I could learn a great deal. And so I went on and, and really enjoyed history and enjoyed the other students, but I enjoyed Trinity a lot, and I still have a lot of friends from here, of course. The thing about Trinity is it's always had this immense tolerance for people who are different. Trinity respects difference, and it quite likes the fact that people will have, you know, very specific interests, perhaps be rather eccentric, and I've always thought that's a strength of Trinity. You don't realize it now, but this is a very nice time when you can think about things, you can read things, you can explore ideas, and so to treat it just as a boring period you have to get through, it seems to me a great, wa great waste. I had some wonderful professors, some of whom I was very fortunate to see when we had our 50th anniversary. Some of them were still going strong and, and came along. And I remember them, they were all different. Some were very shy, some were very uh, extrovert. Some were quite difficult. I remember Donald Creighton, who was the great Canadian historian who, who terrified us all. And there were others who were very friendly. So they all, I think, influence us in our different ways. I don't think there's one kind of professor who influences you. I think it's a number of them. But I remember with great affection taking courses from someone like Professor Ken McNaught, who was a great expert in American history, uh, cl classes from uh, Professor John Beatty, who was a great expert in the history of uh, the 18th century. Professor John Cairns, who was a great expert in the history of 19th century France. And I think what really stood out about them all, they were very different sorts of people, what stood out about them all was that they had a great passion for history, they had very high standards about how it should be done, and they taught us very, very well. A number of us in my year went off to become historians, we went off and did graduate work, and, and wherever we went, I went to Oxford and one of my friends went to Harvard, we always felt we had been very, very well prepared. We'd been very well taught, and that I was grateful for. Now, the one thing that was interesting about the history department of the University of Toronto in those days is there were no women professors. It was a completely male department, and there was a history club to which only young men could, join, could belong, which infuriated me. Um, I think it helped me to become a feminist. But it never stopped me from wanting to be a an historian. And for you, it may seem that there's still obstacles in the way of women, but there were more, and it has changed. I mean, when I was at the University of Toronto, I was on the University of Toronto debating team, and I also debated for St. Hilda's, and the center of debating at the University of Toronto was Hart House. I couldn't speak there. Toronto, when I grew up, was a boring city. It was very sedate. It was it tended to be mostly... Um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants or Celts like me, we all tended to look the same. It was divided between Catholics and Protestants and that was very much a factor. Um, then immigrants began to come from different cultural backgrounds and different ethnic backgrounds and I think at first people were sort of rather shocked by this. They said these strange people are coming and they use garlic in their food and what's becoming of Toronto? And gradually somehow Toronto absorbed this change and of course the, the first Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau, opened up the restrictions on immigration, and so people began to move to Canada from all over the world, whereas previously they'd only come from Europe and the, the you know, places like Australia or New Zealand. It began to change a lot. And I think Toronto has become an infinitely more interesting city. Um, it's multicultural in a very good sort of way. 
it has a great blending of cultures. It has wonderful restaurants. It has very good culture. I mean, I, I, I love what's happened to Toronto. So the history of the University of Toronto is part and parcel of or affected by the history of Canada, the history of Toronto, the history of education, the history of ideas. And I think we've always got to try and bring the two together. We, we need the people who do the very particular studies, and we also need the people who do the more general studies, the more synthetic studies. And of course, where history has been changing enormously is in the sorts of subjects we study. And I think that's enriched it hugely. But there are challenges, and one of the challenges will be for you, if any of you become historians, will be if you want to study this period that we're in right now, is what is the record? Because people aren't keeping documents in the same way, people don't write letters anymore, um, people perhaps don't keep diaries as much as they used to. Emails are evanescent, they tend to vanish. Um, not many people I know keep their emails. Uh, people in government are becoming much more cautious about what they put down because it can be leaked. Uh, things like WikiLeaks have, have really made governments very cautious indeed which will have a disadvantage both for governments remembering why they decided certain things they won't be able to remember, and it will also have a real disadvantage for future historians. Archivists are very, very worried. You know, how do you keep tweets? How do you keep, you know, you don't. You know, they just vanish. Um, and most people do emails and then they vanish into the ether. You don't probably keep your emails. No. no. Yeah. But if you want to look back 10 years from now and think, what was I thinking when I was at Trinity? What was I thinking when I was studying at the University of Toronto? Um, who are my friends? You know. You, you, may, you may find it harder to find. Because history helps us understand how we've come to be, the sort of society we are, the sorts of people we are. It helps us to know how we got here. And by studying the history of institutions, such as the University of Toronto, you study the history of institutions that have been very important in forming generations of young Canadians who have gone on to contribute to Canadian society in many ways. And that university, of course, has changed over the years. It's become much more inclusive. It's become much bigger. Of course, it didn't used to take women in the old days. And a lot has changed. And I think it's very important to understand that.